Hi everyone, I'm Nicole with American Duchess, and today we're going to be talking about why feet are weird. Today I wanted to walk you through some of the different parts of the foot, what we consider when we're working as shoemakers, and how this translates into the actual finished shoes, so that way when you go and try on a pair of shoes, you'll be able to not just understand if they fit or if they don't fit, but perhaps why they may not fit, and what you can do about it to fix it, because the answer may not be just simply sizing up or sizing down, but in reality it can be a lot more complicated, but also a lot more simple than that. So the first thing I want to do with you today is to go over some of the terminology of the foot and of shoemaking. So we're going to start off with this little sample shoe right here. This is a great example of how we as shoemakers understand the foot just a little bit better. The first term that we're going to learn today is the joint. A lot of people refer to it as the ball of the foot, but it's just simply that measurement that goes across your joints. The next is going to be your instep. Now the instep is not the arch of your foot. That's a whole different part. The instep is this little pointy bone <laughs> that sits on top of your foot. It really it doesn't squish, it doesn't move, and if you press on it, it can be incredibly painful. So that instep measurement is that measurement that goes around that area. In between the joint and the instep, we have the waist. If you want to think of your foot as the same sort of idea as your body, where you have your chest, your waist, and your hip, it's honestly very similar. We use the same three circles circumference measurement that we do on the body, and honestly, your foot is just about as complicated. So in addition to that, we also have basic things like your heel or your toes. We know those pretty well. As a shoemaker, when we're measuring the foot, we aren't simply measuring the length and the width. That only tells us a very limited amount. It's sort of like getting your height and a silhouette of your body. It doesn't give you the full picture. What we do instead is make sure that we take those three circumferences that we talk about. So we'll put the feet on the sheet of paper, trace around them so we understand what the footprint actually looks like. We'll make sure we get the length out of that sort of tracing, and then we actually measure circumference-wise around all three points of the foot. Now, when you're measuring the joint, you measure very snugly. When you're measuring the instep, you don't want to pull too tight because that's not a squishy part of the foot. Those three measurements are essential in understanding the size and the shape of the foot as well as the proportions. See, the interesting thing is somebody can have the same exact footprint print as another person, but have a completely different size of foot. I wanted first to show you these three different measurements that I've taken of three different people's feet. This one over here is mine. Interestingly enough, all three of these are within an eighth of an inch in length, so they're all pretty much the same size based off of length. And in fact, if you look at the footprints, they're very similar. Mine is the most narrow, but only by about an eighth of an inch. Theoretically, these should all be the same size, right? Well, the thing is, my measurements are seven and three quarters at the joint, then eight and eight. If we go up to the next one, we have eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. We've already added half an inch. We go up to the third person's, it's nine on all three measurements. So we have more than an inch difference at the ball of the foot when there's only maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch difference in the footprint. So it makes a really big difference very quickly. Sort of think of it like measuring your own body. You don't measure your body by checking your height and then taking a silhouette. You check your circumferences. It's the same way for feet. The circumference of your foot can change pretty drastically. It can be very flat and wide. It can be very narrow and high. All three of those measurements can vary drastically. It may be that you're very wide at the ball of the foot, but very narrow at the instep for lots of different reasons. Those measurements are gonna vary pretty widely from person to person, from foot to foot. They also only tell you so much about the interaction between the foot and the shoe. While I can certainly make up a last to those measurements, when I'm measuring someone's foot, I'll be able to check if perhaps their foot is very solid. Doesn't really move, squish. It is what it is. I can't compress it very much. But there are some people that have very flexible feet. Even if you get that exact measurement, when they stand up, their foot spreads out a great deal. So it may end up being when they try on a shoe, it fits very comfortably when they're seated, but the moment they stand up, their foot expands half an inch or more, and suddenly that shoe doesn't really fit that well anymore. So we can tell a lot by measurements, but there's so much that's missing. That's one of the reasons why it doesn't actually make sense to have exact measurements of, say, the interior of a shoe, and assume that you can tell whether a shoe's gonna fit you based off of those or not. There's a lot more that goes into your foot than just length and width, or even circumferences. There's things like 
proportion, where the joint is in comparison to the heel and the toe. It may be that your joint to your foot sits really far back and you have very long toes, or maybe that it sits really far forward and you have very short toes. Those proportions can make a big difference. This measurement here that we took around the instep, it might be high based off of high instep, or it may be that you have a flat foot, and so therefore that circumference is very large, or vice versa, a high arch or a low instep can give you a very small measurement. So it only tells you so much even with those measurements, and therefore only so much by actually measuring the interior of the shoe, which is nearly impossible to do in an accurate way. When it comes to understanding what size you should order, it's always gonna come down to what size do you regularly wear in that style. That's the key factor. If you always wear flats and you're trying to buy a pair of heels, it may end up being half size different. If you always wear round toes and you're buying a pointed toe, that may be, end up being different. That's really hard to say until you've tried it. Because even with those measurements that we've got, it only means so much. It's all about how your foot interacts with that shoe. One of the things I can tell you is that the difference in length between half sizes is about two to three millimeters in length, and the difference in the actual width, that is the sole width, not the overall circumference, but just the width of the sole, is around three to four millimeters. It doesn't seem like a huge difference, but it can add up very quickly when you think about the fact that once you've done that to your entire circumference, you've now added a fair bit more. Not quite a full centimeter around. That's one of the reasons why going up half a size essentially takes you from a B width to a C width. That's six millimeters difference. So you're going to get that out of going up half a size. That's one of the reasons why we generally recommend if you feel like you have a wider width foot consistently, go up half a size. It gives you essentially a C width, even though it does give you a little bit longer length. In those situations, you might then find that your foot might slip in the heel or slip too far down into the shoe, in which case a little bit of extra cushioning will help sort of seat it and keep it in place. Because you want your foot snug, safe inside of that shoe. You don't want it moving around and slipping around. But you also don't want it so contracted that it starts to be painful. So the simple answer here is your shoes and your feet are going to have a fairly um, complex relationship. Doesn't mean it's going to be a bad one. It just means that it's something that you have to think about when you're buying shoes and when you're trying them on, making sure that everything interacts correctly. It's not just one part of the shoe that may or may not fit. The entire shoe may fit differently in different places. And that's not a matter of the shoe being a poor design or your foot being weird, because honestly, all feet are weird. It's just a matter of the style of the shoe and how it interacts with your exact proportions and measurements and all of the oddities that go into your foot and what you find personally comfortable. Make sure that you take the time to get your foot and your shoe to have the happiest, healthiest relationship possible. We're going to start off with the idea of the wide foot. What exactly makes it a wide foot? It could be that you have that tendency to spread, that you have a very flexible foot so that the tendons across that joint spread out and flex very easily. This particularly happens if you go barefoot a lot or you wear very wide shoes. Your foot kind of expands to fill the void. I kind of say feet are like cats. They will fill whatever space you give them. It can spread out a lot over the years for lots of different reasons, including pregnancy. It may be that you have a bit more of a fleshy foot. So in this case, maybe that your measurements are fairly accurate to what would be a standard width, but if you go with a shoe that is open on top, like a Mary Jane or an open pump, it kind of cuts in across an area. And that may just simply be that your foot's pretty squishy and will sort of slide forward and mold, like I said, cat-like into that shoe, but it spills out over the top. This may be a matter of making sure that your foot needs to be situated farther back into the shoe so it doesn't sort of push down in and squish in, or it may be simply sticking with styles that fit your foot more comfortably. Things that are higher up on the foot, laced over, buttoned over, that can sort of hold your foot into place. Make sure that you don't end up with anything cutting in across the joint of your foot. You may also find that the wide foot is more a matter of proportion. The joint of your foot is really far forward in proportion in comparison to what the shoe is intended for. You're actually moving rather than the bulk of your foot sitting across here, the bulk of your foot is sitting where now it's gotten narrower. So it may be that your foot slides forward into the shoe too far, because it may actually be a little bit narrow, and crams your toes in, pushes that too far forward. So as long as you're sure that you are seated all the way back in the shoe, but you still have an issue of it being really tight in your toe area, it might just be 
not only the toe shape, but the shape of your foot and the proportions of your foot. If you're seated on that joint too far forward in a pointed toe, it becomes a problem. If you know this is the case, and it tends to be the case with me, you might know that in more pointed styles, you do need to go up half a size, maybe in order to keep your foot then from slipping forward, you add a little bit of cushioning to it, something under the ball of the foot or toe spacers to help keep your foot placed all the way back in the shoe. Your heel to your ball of foot measurement is just as important as your overall measurement. When it comes to accommodating overall width issues, that's when stretching can be incredibly useful. Not only the overall width, but also for very specific areas. If you get a shoe stretcher like this one, not only does it actually stretch out the width, but it can actually have very specific additional pieces that you can place on the shoe wherever you need to stretch a specific area. You wanna add shoe stretch spray to the inside of your shoe and then put a shoe stretcher inside and the whole process will be much faster and easier. Now, some of the other places you might find with issues come higher up on the foot. I mentioned earlier that you may have a higher low instep or a higher low arch. You may find if you have a smaller circumference in this area due to either one of those issues, your foot's gonna slip a lot more easily, not just in open shoes, but in shoes like Oxfords or boots as well. So if you find that you are seated all the way back in the shoe, but you can still move really easily, it's not just the heel that slips, but this whole area, you've laced it down as tightly as you can, you've buttoned it down as tightly as you can, you can still move a lot. That's where if you can move the buttons over, that's great. But if you are in a shoe where it's laced up as tightly as possible, you probably need to add some additional padding. That's when the arch support area is a great way to do it. So even if you have a little bit of a flat foot, adding some padding here may still really help to keep your foot in place if you have a low instep as well. We're used to adding it there if we have a high arch. We don't really think about the fact that if you have a flat foot and a low instep, your circumference is also too narrow to be seated properly in that shoe. The reverse is also true where if you have too much in that area of the circumference, that's when shoes that are laced open that you can adjust for, maybe moving those buttons over a little bit can really help, making sure that you aren't snug down on that because there's a lot of pain in that high end step if it's too snug. So you want to make sure that whatever style of shoe you've got either leaves that open or can be adjusted to accommodate that. You may also find that you have heel slippage regardless of this being seated really well. Even if it's very tight and comfortable in that area, your heel may still slip because it's very narrow. The little heel pads will do very well for that area. It sort of wraps around this part of the heel and holds it into place because our feet naturally sort of slope right there. So we want to make sure that we're holding the bulk of our heel down in the shoe so those little uh, heel inserts can make a big difference. So basically, you may not only need to stretch part of your shoe to accommodate a wider part of your foot, but you may also need inserts in different areas. If you have a wide joint but a very narrow heel, it may need inserts and stretching. It may be that you need inserts to hold your foot back into place in order for the shoe to not be too short. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about holding your foot in place, making sure that you have enough room for it, but not so much that it moves around inside. You'll get a lot of abrasions and other problems from that, just as much as you would if your shoe is too tight. You can't expect a pair of shoes to fit you perfectly every single time. Feet are very unique, shoes are very unique, and how they are fit is going to change, how they interact is going to change. Think about the fact that you might have to add some inserts, do some stretching to make it fit just right. Shoes can go through a great deal of change on the inside. When it comes to stretching, you can expect on shoes that don't have any sort of interruptions across the ball of the foot, that don't have seaming or other decorations, you can easily go up one to two measurements in terms of width. One stretching, I managed to get six millimeters added to the circumference. Two stretchings taking place over two days, so that way I'm not doing it too fast, got me a little over one millimeter. So it basically went from a B width to a D width just by stretching a couple of times. So there's a lot that you can do in order to get the shoe to fit you properly. Thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope it helps you understand your foot a little bit better. I know it can be rather confusing and complicated of a process, but the more time you spend paying attention to how your feet feel inside of shoes, the better you're going to understand what shoes really work for you and 
maybe how to adjust some of those shoes that you've had sitting in your closet gathering dust for months or years because they weren't quite comfortable enough to wear, maybe now you'll know how to fix that so that way they're just perfect in the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you really liked this video, check out some of our other ones. We have great videos on shoe care and lots of other topics that can help you make sure that your feet and your shoes are doing the best that they can. Thanks so much, everybody. The dog wanted cuddles. Mm. Oh God, I don't want to say that. <laughs> Somebody said help. Feet are weird. Feet are weird. Feet are weird. Feet are weird. <laughs>